So I'm going to invite Chris and then Peter just to say a few words about what they've heard and how it resonates with them. So Chris, would you like to say a few words? Wow, I tell you, it sounds uh, superb. I think if, uh, if any of you give up your day job, I'm in trouble. Because <laughs> uh, you're uh, brilliant ambassadors and some, some, some great stuff there. And I think probably some of my perspectives on that are that, you know, we often have this uh, uh, challenge sometimes about the fact that we know that the biggest market that comes to the city is visiting family and friends. But we also know that we always have a challenge about people not knowing what's on their own doorstep. In, in many ways, and actually always thinking, I can do that tomorrow, I can do it next week, and never end up doing it. And, and I think some of those storylines that you all came out with, you know, demonstrate the richness and the historical context of this city, and, the, and so many places that actually depict that that you all, uh, you all picked through, which not only reflects, I think, about the strength and depth of the city's offer, but also the proximity that it has to many other parts of the city region that demonstrate that history, and I think you were know, you, going to mention around the, the statues and such forth demonstrates that. So I think there's, a, there's some interesting takes on that in terms of how, how we get that message out to people. I think also it demonstrates to us the power and the importance of the residents of the city in terms of being able to tell our story effectively and also the welcome and friendliness that comes through that. Because uh, we, we know that historically that you know when people come to the city, the, the first thing that really uh, you know, invigorates them is when they meet locals. Sometimes they have interesting conversations with black taxi cabs, I have to say, but uh, in, in most cases, it's a, it's, a, it's a vastly important part of their, of their visit and a, an integral part of the city. The other part for me is kind of like the whole diversity and richness that I think probably honestly, we probably don't really tell that story as well as we could do. Uh, it's really deep um, and actually, a lot for us to think about and even when we come to things like Black History Month and whatever reminds us actually that this is not really about a month, it's about a celebration of what this whole place is, is about and there's, there's probably some stuff for us to, to, re, to reflect on that. I think also the importance of neighbourhoods, I think we, you know, there's a task for us to look at how we get the city, the city centre, we heard about it so much here about how positive that city centre experience is but we want to get people out of the city as well and experience other parts of the city, the, the other parts, not just for, uh, for, for Anfield or whatever, but actually to, to, get, to, to get out and about and see more of what we've got to offer. And I think that's all about, kind of in this context of the sort of 20 minute city, about getting more people feel that wherever you go within 20 minutes of the city centre, there's something for you uh, to enjoy. So I think, you know, I think, you know, to me in a kind of summary of that, I mean, it's a, it's a, it, it sort of, I think demonstrates how proud we should be about the offer of the city. I suppose in the way that uh, you're a Nigerian scouser, I'm a, I'm a Scottish scouser, uh, but you know, I think the, 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 the city is such an invigorating, exciting place. It does unique and, and, and amazing things. I, I too was at the, uh, the, the Green Classics. I felt very old actually at the Green Classics. Uh, but also, I also recall there that sitting watching that stage with the Philharmonic was the Queen Elizabeth in the background. Uh, and you kind of think, well, what city would have the Queen Elizabeth in one place, the Philharmonic Orchestra and all these balmy people dancing away there's no tomorrow on the pier head, just, just incredible. I think it's those sights and sounds that make it so, so important. So I think in summary for me, it's a, it was a, you know, really invigorating stuff. And, and, and I think you know, my, me and my team or some here tonight would, would all learn something from, from that story. But it sort of tells you we've got a great story to tell. We probably have an even greater story we haven't told yet. And the last input of the evening to Peter. I can just agree with everything Chris has just said. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I think, you know, thanks for that really, really, really uh, kind of insightful. Um, I'm absolutely exhausted after all that, by the way. And, and particularly Jay's, how, how he got all that to 48 hours, no ideas. He probably would have been 48 days more than anything. Um, God, reflections, there's so much to say, isn't there? I don't quite know where to start. Perhaps. You know, the, the title being Tourist versus Residents, um, as, as someone who's lived here for all his life in that sense. You know, I grew up in the 1980s in the city, for those of you who remember, was, wasn't a great place in the 1980s. And uh, you, kind of, you kind of felt like you apologised for where you came from. You know, I remember going on holiday to Mallorca with my mum and dad. And it's, it's 
from? And mum and dad in the poshest voice, oh, we come from Chester. And we go, no, we don't, we come from Liverpool. You know, and, and it's kind of like, I was really proud, but, but actually we kind of felt like, you know, the, the waterfront wasn't a great state. So we got that kind of Tory uh, government, which, which really wasn't doing us any favours until Michael Heseltine turned up. And there was a nice cool work song called You Never Seen Your Home Town and You've been, been Around the World. And I went to um, Leicester for five years and I came back and actually thought there's just so much to offer here. You know, I'm so lucky. And that's the reason why I've spent the next 45 years living in this, uh, living this, this, this great city and city region. I am from the dark side in, in Wirral, by the way, just to, just to confirm that. But, but I, think, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think the thing for me is that it's like the landmark moments is that I, I did distinctly remember in 2004 or 2005 when it was just driving out the Mersey Tunnel at the precise moment that we got announced European Capital of Culture and you could just feel the lift that gave everybody. It was just this kind of confidence and when I come back to the point about apologising for who we are, actually at that, that point we stopped apologising for who we are because we recognised that you know, we, we, we've been on an incredible journey, we've got some incredible stories to tell and uh, actually I mean, coming back to what Frank says, really, I, I kind of jotted down here, Frank, what, what, let's see if I can read it, I haven't got any specs with me, but you talked about geography, love and welcome, and kind of it just sort of meshed all those things together in my mind when we got capital of culture. And we always, and this term's been used loads of time, the kind of rocket fuel, all the rest of it, you know, that really helped the city's regeneration and the wider city region's regeneration, that was absolutely true. And then when you see, back to my 90s, 80s experience to what waterfront we now have, you know, in terms of the, the kind of ACCL, the museums, um, the new ferry terminal, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The, the plans for future developments, absolutely incredible. And I think actually, from my perspective, you've articulated all the things that we have now and the things that we should be really proud of as, 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 as residents of this, this great city and city region, but also those people that come and visit as well. So I think, I think when I come back to the, the, the point around tourists versus residents, I think, I think there's a point around saying the people of this city and the city region make us who we are because they give us distinctiveness, they give us authenticity and uh, they, they, they kind of make us different, they give us personality that I think other cities and city regions just quite frankly don't have. I think the other point to this as well, kind of building on what Chris has said, is that, you know, it's not just about that, it's not just about friendliness, it's actually about giving people a really good experience, a really good time and I, I kind of always look at it you know, and you, you talk about black taxi drivers, you talk about people who work in, you know, kind of hotel receptions. You know, they're the people that are kind of on the front line. They're the people that, you know, really kind of sell this city and this city region. And I think, you know, our challenge is to make sure that we're investing in those people because they are the advocates at the end of the day. They actually, they make people decide whether they like the city region or not in many, many cases, you know. So I think the way that we kind of approach that, particularly around skills and training and fair pay and good employment conditions is actually key critical for us. And, and they are residents, aren't they? So I kind of want to come back to this. I'm sorry, I didn't have 20 or whatever it was to prepare for this. It's just me probably waffling now. But, but when it comes to that, that kind of um, juxtaposition almost, you know, we've got to recognise that if we're going to sustain the economic growth that the visitor economy has given us and tourism has given us over the last kind of 20 odd years, we've got to be prepared to invest in the people that make it work. And those people are residents at the end of the day because they give us our product, they give us our personality, but they also give us that really, really important service and make people want to come back again. And I think that ran through everything you guys were saying, to be perfectly honest with you. So I'm not quite sure whether that was just a rambling mess or whatever, but hopefully it made some kind of sense. And that would be my take back to those kind of four excellent, five excellent presentations that we just received. Thank you.